Hello, thanks for joining me. I'm Alicia Malone, and after your trip down Noir Alley with Eddie Muller, we are starting with a musical that brought together some of the all-time greatest musical performers. And this was just the fourth musical made by a major studio to feature an all-black cast. Produced by MGM and released in 1943, it's Cabin in the Sky. This was an adaptation of the Broadway musical, which had premiered on the stage in 1940, starring Ethel Waters as Petunia and Dooley Wilson as Little Joe. The story follows the fight for Little Joe's soul after he is seriously injured. His wife, Petunia, prays for him to be saved, but both Lucifer Jr. and the General of Heaven want Little Joe on their respective sides. When MGM took on this project, produced by Arthur Freed, Ethel Waters was hired to reprise her stage role, but Dooley Wilson was replaced with Eddie Rochester Anderson, whom the studio thought was a bigger name for movie audiences. Ethel Waters had been involved with the script for the Broadway production because she had objected to the way Petunia was originally written. As Waters said, this was a man's play and Petunia was simply a punching bag for Little Joe. She joined the cast because she thought the music was pretty, but added lines and changed dialogue to beef up the role. But her problems didn't end there because on this film adaptation, there was tension between her and Lena Horne, who had been cast to play Georgia Brown, a former lover of Little Joe. This was a rare acting role for Lena Horne and her most significant at MGM. Usually she would only sing a song in a scene that could be easily cut out if there were objections because of her race. Though even here, in a film featuring an all-black cast, the censors refused to approve her character's introduction, which was supposed to take place in a bubble bath. Directed by Vincent Minnelli and also featuring Louis Armstrong and Duke Ellington, from 1943, this is Cabin in the Sky. Because of its all-black cast, Cabin in the Sky was considered a big risk for MGM, though it was the cheapest film that producer Arthur Freed made at the studio throughout the 1940s. And as film historian Donald Bogle pointed out, while the casting seemed progressive for a Hollywood studio, the content of the story was still the same as ever. Because like earlier films featuring all black casts, these characters were, quote, removed from the daily routine of real American life and placed in a remote, idealized world. This was director Vincent Minnelli's first feature film, and he was determined to bring great affection to the story, rather than, as he said, condescension. But he knew that, quote, if there were any reservations about the film, they revolved around the story, which reinforced the naive, childlike stereotype of black people. In the end, Cabin in the Sky did pretty well at the box office, especially considering its low budget, and critics praised the film, as well as the way Minnelli was able to make an A picture out of the B budget. Okay, it's time for a quick break, and when we return, we'll have Eve Arden as her famous character Miss Brooks in a 1956 comedy based on her radio and TV show.